Well, a lot of people have been talking about how bodybuilding is bad for you because there's so many bodybuilders dropping dead, uh, seemingly from steroid abuse and stimulant abuse. In the 90s, we had a wave of athletes dropping dead from um, ephedrine. They were abusing ephedrine, not following the package directions, mind you, but they were abusing ephedrine and dropping dead. They were doing things like wearing, you know, uh, sauna suits and running and stuff like that. And so that was a big thing in the 90s. Everybody was talking about how, you know, ephedrine is killing people. And technically that they, they was, but it was because people were overdosing on it. And we still have uh, large scale abuse of stimulants, not just by athletes now, but by nerds and everyone else. See. In the, in the 80s and 90s, most of the people that were abusing stimulants were athletes or <laughs> amphetamine addicts. Uh, now you have a lot of, uh, with the energy drinks being as available as they are, you have people overdosing on caffeine on a daily basis. Coffee used to be an acquired taste. Uh, not a ton of people even liked coffee. Uh, maybe they would opt for tea or nothing. Maybe, maybe nothing that's caffeinated, you know what I mean? So it became uh, very, it's a very different world than it was uh, when bodybuilding initially started. So bodybuilding and longevity, I've, I've uh, cited this before. This is from Frank Zane. Frank Zane wasn't just a bodybuilder. He was also a math and science teacher, a high school math and science teacher. So as he says here, turning 74 prompted him to wonder how long bodybuilders live. Well, here's an example of some, these are classic bodybuilders. John Grimek, 88. John Farpanik, 73. Steve Reeves, 74. Reg Park, 79. Vince Gironda, 80. Uh, Zabo Koswiski, 84. Dick Dubois, 74. George Eiferman, 77. Armin Tanny, 90. Vic Tanny, 73. Joe Gold, 82. Jack LaLanne, 96. Bob Delamontiu, Delamontiu, 90. Joe Weeder, 93. Bob Hoffman, 87. Jules Bacon, 90. Ron Lacey, 76. Jack Dellinger, 66. Mickey Haggerty, 80. Clarence Ross, 85. Jim Park, 80. Eugene Sandow, 57. Walt Baptiste, 84. Average bodybuilder lifespan is 81, okay? In, this li in the list, he did not include bodybuilders who died from accidental deaths. Uh, you can see that if a person exercises regularly and follows a sensible nutrition program, as serious bodybuilders do, or at least did, uh, it increases the likelihood of a longer life. Not only that, all of these guys looked way better than an average person the same, at the same age. The inevitable conclusion is that not only do bodybuilders tend to live longer, but they look better during their lives. Better than average people who do not follow a lifestyle that pays attention to health, fitness, and well-being. All of the bodybuilders in this list are from the pre-steroid era. Now, does he point that out? That's very important to know. They are from the pre-steroid era. So these old timers lived an average of 81 years without exogenous hormones. He said, I'm curious how long today's steroid abusing bodybuilders will last. Best you can do is slow down degenerative aging changes and look and feel good as you get older. Flesh and bones can only last so long, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Now, this is Lifeboat Foundation. This is a, um, a life extension blog, more or less. So, Dr. Jeffrey Life is on their board. Now, people remember I did a video on Dr. Jeffrey Life who reversed his aging process essentially by... <laughs> practicing medical bodybuilding, for lack of a better term. So Dr. Jeffrey Life is a physician and author from the United States. He is board certified in family medicine, 
a diplomat of the American Board of Family Practitioners and fellow in the American Academy of Family Physicians uh, since 1990. He is a certified speaker for the Bale Donine Method of Heart Attack and Stroke Prevention. He is the Director of Medical Services for the Life Center for Healthy Aging in Charleston, West Virginia. Uh, Jeff's first book, The Life Plan, was released in 2011 and became a New York Times bestseller. He followed it with Mastering the Life Plan and The Life Plan Diet in 2014. Okay, in 1997, Jeff was a board-certified family practice physician who was 59 years old, overweight, and poorly conditioned. So he started the process to achieving this at 59. He's now in his 80s, okay? and poorly conditioned with rapidly declining health. He decided it was time to focus medical attention on himself. He began reading fitness magazines and came across an article that featured the winners of the Body for Life contest. Jeff started by eating a low glycemic, low fat diet and took nutraceuticals with a heavy exercise regime. At the end of 1998, at 60 years of age, and after consistently eating right and training right, he became the grand champion in Bill Phillips' 1998 Body for Life. Edging towards 63, Jeff was again slowly losing muscle mass, strength, and was regaining body fat, especially in the belly. His energy levels was his energy level was waning, as uh, was his libido. He had heard about the anti-aging medicine movement when he was introduced to an entire new when he was introduced to an entire new paradigm with new products and philosophies. Within a couple of weeks, he started to see and feel a marked shift in his body, mind, and spirit. It was life-altering, and it became the catalyst that that moved him from the traditional family medicine to healthy aging medicine. He wanted every man and woman to have hope for a better life. Today at 79, he's in his 80s now, uh, at 79 years of age, he is in the best shape of his life. He works out in the gym five days a week and has a thriving practice in Charleston, West Virginia, the Life Center for Healthy Aging. Uh, blah blah. The program works. I am living my I am living my dream. Yeah, da, da, da. Jeff has appeared on the Doctor Phil Show, Inside Edition, The Doctors, The Steve Harvey Show, Anderson Cooper's AC. Blah blah blah. Da, da, da. Okay. What a lot of people don't understand is bodybuilding and exercise is not just for guys, okay? If women want to look great, Bill Pearl explained this when I did my video on Bill Pearl, people will video, yeah, it was one video on Bill Pearl. People will remember that he pointed out that lifting works the same way for men and women, okay? And it, it does. Being strong is a difficult choice, but it be, so this is Erin Stern. She's a two-time Miss Olympia so being strong is a difficult choice, but it becomes a habit like anything when practiced over time. She has justified her state. That's what she said. She has justified her statement by helping others to achieve balance and happiness by uncovering their own unique strength. Yes, we are unfolding the fitness rules followed with her compatible workout routine and diet of none other than the fitness diva, Erin Stern, author of three books, Empower Your Life. Uh, train like a bodybuilder and the bodybuilder's kitchen, her sustainable athletic training protocols make her an idol to people who believe in healthy living methods. A two-time figure Olympia champion, uh, a 14-time IFBB champion, a self-coached lifetime natural athlete, and a former Division I track and field junior All-American are all the credits that Stern has earned for herself. With the height of 5'9 and a body weight of 139 pounds, this fitness model completely nails her gesture with brown hair and white ethnicity, uh, paired with brown and white ethnicity. Who the hell wrote this? <laughs> okay. Nationality, American pro pro profession, uh, professional fitness coach and bodybuilder. Date of birth, 5th of February, 1980. Uh, belonging to a Jewish athlete's family, Erin at the... Okay, I guess it's important that her family's Jewish. <laughs> Belonging to an athlete's family, Erin at a very young age developed a passion for running and horse riding, which took her on a track with her career. Unlike other fitness models, Erin is not a supporter of the words uh, of the words strict diet plans. 
uh, you read and write, you read it right, uh, friends. Our athlete diva shares her thoughts on the word diet, which conno- with which connotates, or which connotes. I'm sorry, deprivation. She uh, advises the need for experiments and thinks it is important to test drive diets. Aaron Stern's diet. Stern adds on by saying that the quali- the quantity and quality of fuel both are important for a workout regime. She is exclusively active, uh, hence doesn't count calories. She is exclusively active. That's the wrong word. But she doesn't count calories and keeps her carb intake relatively high, which are supposed to be good carbs. She is not a believer in cha- and in cheat meals. They put chat meals. Although she says that treat that treat meals may not be clean, but that still have some nutritional value. Uh, with her simple eating habits, Erin likes to keep in cre- keep it creative as health is a priority, along with performance. This natural athlete suggests going for macronutrients and advocates for protein, for a protein, a carb, and fat in each meal, sort of like the zone diet. To reach a bigger platform, you need to step on small stairs. That's exactly how Erin motivates you with, with uh, her diet plan. Uh, you'll notice that she is one of the people that eats six meals a day, six small meals a day, again, similar to the zone diet. Meal, egg whites, cooked and cooked dry oats. Meal two, grilled chicken, black rice, and spinach salad. Meal three, tuna and rice cakes. Meal four, uh, Dimatize ISO 100 and fresh fruits. That's, uh, I'm assuming, a protein shake. Meal five, egg white omelet and broccoli. Meal six, casein yogurt and egg white omelet. Uh, to pamper her workout, Erin relies on supplements such as carnitine, that should say carnitine, it says camatine, uh, congelated linoleic acid, branch chain amino acids, whey protein, etc. Now look, she went from that to that. Probably not overnight though. <laughs> so for all your all you fitness lovers out there, it's a relief you get from our fitness diva's workout regime. Aaron's ath- Aaron athletic body is I should say Aaron's athletic body is not intrigued by the logic of calorie counting. She rather gives importance to the timing of calorie consumption uh, that would fuel her body both pre and post workout. Not only with her diet that she does uh, mark herself as different. Okay, guys, da, da. she lifts weight but balances herself by training st- training for strength, speed, and physical supporting each activity with the other. Okay, let's see. So her back workout is pull ups, five sets of five reps, followed by five more exercises. Uh, day two shoulders workout. Uh, the jerk balance, six sets, three reps, followed by five more exercises. So as you can t- see, she is definitely training for power. Day three, leg workout, hang clean, six sets, followed by six more exercises. Day four, weekly, off. Day five, arms workout, superset, close grip, bench press, four sets, 10 reps, followed by four more exercises. This is not very accurate. I mean, this is not a very detailed list here, is it? Day six, track training, chest workout, treadmill running, four sprints for uh, 400 400 miles. What? And, uh, okay, Uh, must be 400 meters, followed by six more exercises, treadmill running on day seven. Conclusion, Erin, with her extensive knowledge in training, nutrition, and competition, developed a program that parallels her fitness philosophy and style of training that can help you develop a strong, lean physique or lean athletic build. Other than using dumbbells, bench, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's move on here. One of the things that people don't understand is bodybuilding uh, back in the day, back in the late mid to late 1800s, started almost simultaneously with the medical discipline of naturopathy. So one of the key aspects of naturopathy is the concept of following a vegan diet. Now, this young lady uh, who is named Natalie Matthews is indeed a vegan. So let's see what she says here. 
Natalie has been vegetarian since her Puerto Rican childhood when she ate around the meat on her plate. Tough to do since her culture's cuisine is very meat forward. About five years ago, she also dropped the dairy to support her husband, whose doctor recommended giving up milk and cheese to see if his sinuses improved. Uh, I noticed a difference. My acne cleared up and I had so much energy and focus that there was no going back, says Natalie, who posts recipes and sells book cookbooks on her site, Fit Vegan Chef. I'm in the best shape of my life, not despite, but because of the vegan lifestyle. There are vegan athletes all over the world, thriving and dominating in all different sports. Her main strategy is to, t is to make sure she gets enough protein. Her favorite sources include tofu, tempeh, lentils, uh, I'm sorry, legumes, lentils, protein pasta, veggie burgers, and dark leafy greens. The USDA recommends that a 150-pound woman consume 54 grams of protein daily, and it's recommended to get a max of 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. But during her training season, Natalie packs in double that amount at 110 grams, and she makes sure to uh, she makes sure that 80% of her diet consists of whole foods. Even during her off season, she eats a lot. One of my favorite things about being a vegan athlete is the tremendous volume of food I can eat, says Natalie. Plant-based foods are comparatively low in calories, so you can fill up your stomach. I always feel healthy, properly fueled, and satisfied. Okay, this is from Woman's Health, of course. Natalie starts every morning by drinking a big glass of water and a cup of black coffee sweetened with stevia. Remember my views on stevia, but that's not important at this point. She likes to work out early in the morning, so her go-to meal is a bowl of oats and berries, which are filling but not too heavy before she starts lifting. If she's not in the mood for oats, she'll make a protein smoothie bowl or eat fruit with homemade pumpkin granola. On weekends, she can be found whipping up her gluten-free vegan protein waffles, which include vegan protein powder, oats, flax meal, and cacao nibs. After her workout, she's famished and needs to needs a mix of protein, carbs, and fats for recovery. She makes a monstrous macro bowl by adding lentils or tofu to a base of rice, potatoes, or pasta. Uh, she then piles on steamed green vegetables, salad greens, probiotic sauerkraut, and a tablespoon of nutritional yeast to add a cheesy flavor. For healthy fats, she drizzles tahini mixed with lemon juice or adds pumpkin seeds and avocado. This is a great meal to pack and bring, uh, bring with you on the go, says Matthews. I try to eat every color in the rainbow in that bowl. Okay. Snack. If she gets hungry, uh, she, will, she has a stash of her signature energy bites, which are... Um, Imagine cookie dough balls made of dates, oats, vegan protein powder, and peanut butter. Other standbys are hummus with pita or homemade chocolate peanut butter protein bars. Okay. For dinner, she mixes up a batch of her famous non-fried vegan fried rice that's made with tofu, rice, steamed veggies, garlic, and anti-inflammatory spice turmeric. It feels good to know I'm helping my health and the environment and being compassionate towards animals, says Matthews. Now, now is a great time to be vegan because you can go to the, any grocery store or restaurant and find vegan options. What's Natalie's workout plan? Okay, exercise, seated dumbbell press, uh, three, uh, three to four sets of 10 reps. You'll notice that she's training higher volume with lighter weight. Then Aaron, okay. So <laughs> dumbbell lateral raise, three sets of 15 reps. Machine reverse fly, three to four sets of 15 reps. Front cable raise, three to four sets of 15 reps. Barbell bicep cr uh, curl, three to four sets of 10 reps. Skull crusher, three to four sets of 12 reps. Dumbbell hammer curl, three sets of 15 reps. Cable rope tricep extension, two sets of 20 reps. Cable rope bicep curl, two sets of 20 reps, no rest. Okay. So who is Frank Zane? Frank Zane was born on June 28, 1942. He's 80 years old. His birthplace was Kingston, uh, Pennsylvania, USA. 
He is five foot nine, occupation athlete and bodybuilder. Tags bodybuilder athlete. Relationship status married. Frank Zane biography. Oh, what the hell is this? Okay, Frank Zane biography. Frank Zane is an American bodybuilder known as the chemist. Uh, he is, that's because he was a chemistry and math teacher. He is a three time Mr. Olympia and winner of the prestigious, uh, comp of prestigious competitions. The man has the most. The man has the most. What? Oh, come on. Proportional body in the history of bodybuilding. Frank was born during the Second World War. He is one of the oldest professional bodybuilders, an expert in the field of bodybuilding and active longevity. Okay, he's still built like a brick shit house. Okay, so childhood and youth. Uh, Frank Zane was born in Kingston, Pennsylvania on June 28th, 1942. His father, Adam Zane. Uh, his father, Adam Zane, repaired television and radio equipment. Mother Laura kept the house and raised children. Older Frank and younger Adam. That's his brother's name. The religious views of his Protestant parents made the Zane family stand out among the inhabitants of the city. The boys were laughed and bullied, uh, laughed at and bullied, it should say. Uh, Frank was a fragile teenager and could not protect himself and his younger brother. He decided to become stronger and went into sports. At first, it was a team sport, baseball, football, basketball, then archery. At the age of 14, the future athlete uh, started bodybuilding. Another reason that motivated Zane to get into sports uh, was for was the lifestyle of his father, who died at the age of 57 from alcohol and cigarette abuse. Okay. The teenager did not want to suffer the same fate and did everything to control himself. Physical activity did not prevent the young man from studying well. He was good at mathematics and natural sciences, received awards, became the best student in 1960. Frank continued his education. Uh, he first entered Wilkes, uh, Wilkes, I should say Wilkes-Barre University in Pennsylvania, and then Cal State LA, where the young man earned a bachelor's degree in mathematics and master's degree in experimental psychology, it's bodybuilding. Zane is a three-time Mr. Olympia. His workouts are not aimed at gaining muscle mass, but at creating an aesthetic figure. Keep note of that. That's very important that you keep note of that, and I'm going to show you why later. Okay? Bodybuilding can be bad for you, but only certain ways. So you'll notice again, he trains with lighter weights, more of a body sculpting method. Frank got his nickname, The Chemist, because of his Bachelor of Science degree and also took a lot of supplements and amino acids, which had been uh, unusual before. Besides the athlete combined training with teaching, at first he was a chemistry teacher in, in Reading, Pennsylvania, and then a math teacher in New Jersey and Florida. Zane participated in bodybuilding competitions for 20 years until 1983 and won about 150 awards at the age of 18. He first finished fifth out of 50 participants uh, in at the Mr. Pennsylvania contest in 1969. Frank su surpassed young Arnold Schwarzenegger and won the Mr. Universe in a title in Miami. In 2003, the outstanding bodybuilder received the Arnold, Schwar Arnold Schwarzenegger Lifetime Achievement Award after, um, okay, Lifetime Achievement Award for his dedication and longtime support of the sport. His contest weight was 185 pounds. His height was 5'9". His uh, waist was 200, uh, was 29 inches. His chest was 51 inches. Well, 52 inches, about, uh, waist was about 30 inches. Uh, thighs, 26.3. Uh, I'm sorry, this is in, yeah, 26.3 inches. Arms, 18.8 inches. Calves, 17.3 inches. Zane trained with light weight which earned him many awards. Joe Weider, a founder of the International Federation of Bodybuilding, recommended to train with heavier weights. Okay, but Frank, stro but Frank stroked the right balance for himself and won three consecutive Mr. Olympia titles. Okay, and I'm going to show you why that's important. So that's Frank Zane and Miss America. Okay, the program... Da -da -da. In the 70s, Zane turned to pumping iron training program, but abandoned it became because some parts grew muscle faster than others. 
As a result, the athlete developed his workout plan, which distinguished itself with high intensity. Uh, this workout alternates between volume and strength blocks. So the training involves two large muscle groups and a small one at once. The program is suitable for both gaining mass and shredding. Personal life, that's not important. What is important is that Frank Zane is still pumping iron. In the pantheon of bodybuilders, Frank Zane is up there uh, with the likes of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Zane retired in 1983 and was inducted into the IFBB Hall of Fame in 1999, but as a recent post on his Instagram page shows, uh, he is still up with his training at the age of 79. He's, okay. The clip featured Zane performing one of his preferred bicep exercises, a variation of the incline curl, performed uh, facing down on an incline bench. Uh, this puts tension on your biceps right at the top, so you let the dumbbell hang down, then you curl up, stop at the top, and go down slow. He explained, this is called controlling the negative rep. He explains in a video as he demonstrates the move, you want to develop a rhythm when you're doing them. Rhythm is what counts. Uh, Zane goes on to say that this is a great exercise for achieving peak concentration of the bicep. See, he's concentrating, he's doing isolation exercises. The move that Frank is performing here is similar to a spider, to the spider curl. Okay. Benches of the day. I just wanted to point out that he is still lifting weights and that his method of lifting used light weights and targeting muscle groups. Lou Ferrigno is another bodybuilder that made it into his later years and is still doing well. So his nationality is Italian-American, profession, professional bodybuilder, actor, personal trainer, date of birth, 9th of November, 1951, age 68. Uh, he, uh, he tell about his meal. Who did the writing of these things? Okay, his meal, and work, his meal plan and workout routine. Uh, via many interviews, Instagram chats, and other social media platforms, uh, Lou started body uh, building muscle since he uh, since he liked bodybuilding. Wow, this is written terribly. Let's see Lou Ferrigno body stats. Okay, his height is six foot five. His weight is two hundred eighty five to two hundred ninety five pounds. Chest fifty nine inches. Waist thirty four inches. Arms twenty two point five inches. Thighs twenty nine inches. Uh, in this busy life, blah blah blah. Lou Ferrigno diet. Okay, this is another guy that eats, he eats seven meals. So he, he's eating more similarly uh, to Aaron Stern. He eats six whole eggs, four pieces of toast and fruit, eight ounces of steak and salad, uh, and a salad, one can of tuna, one cup oatmeal and unsweetened applesauce, eight ounces of grilled chicken, and one baked, one backed potato, one baked potato, one can tuna, one cup oatmeal, and sweetened applesauce, an unsweetened applesauce, eight ounces of ground beef, and one baked potato, six whole eggs, and two cups of uh, cottage cheese, supplements, multivitamin, vitamin E, calcium, magnesium. He eats around 3,500 calories a, a day, uh, and Lou is balanced, has, uh, Lou is balanced, his diet is, has balanced his diet with protein, carbs, and fats. While he was in competition, he followed a low-calorie and high-carb diet. So when he was in competition, he followed a low-calorie and high-carb diet. There is some supplement that he some supplements he uses in daily on a daily basis. He doesn't eat any junk food. Uh, we all understand that exercise is important in bodybuilding, but nutrition and diet also plays vital a vital role. That uh, that how. Uh, and how your body works. Lou Ferrigno's workout plan, Monday chest, Tuesday back, Wednesday legs, Thursday shoulders and arms, Friday rest. So chest workout, four, uh, four sets of 10 to 12 reps. He's another one that's training in the higher rep range. Four, uh, four sets of 10 to 12 flat dumbbell fly, four sets of 10 to 12 incline barbell press, four, uh, three sets of 12 to 15 reps dumbbell pullover, uh, three to four sets of 15 reps standing cable chest fly back workout four sets of 10 reps bent over row uh four sets of 10 uh, four sets of 10 reps pull down or i'm sorry pull up 
uh, four sets of 10 reps seated cable row, four sets of 10 reps behind the head pull down, uh, three sets of 10 to 12 reps, hyper, uh, hyper extension, leg workout, da, da, da. I'm, I'm not going to get into his whole workout, but I, what I wanted to point out is he is again lifting in the higher rep range and lifting well into older age. Joe Weider is another bodybuilder that made it to older age. So let's see here. So uh, uh, Joe Weider, Joe's importance in bodybuilding was best described by his friend Arnold Schwarzenegger and his tribute to Joe Arnold said, I knew about Joe Weider long before I met him. He was the godfather of fitness who told all of us to be, uh, to be somebody with a body. Joe Weider died in 2013 at the age of 92, leaving behind a legacy that is forever engraved in the history of bodybuilding. That's what he looked like when he was younger. His weight is 175 to 185 pounds, height 5 foot 10, nationality Canadian, professional, uh, profession, professional bodybuilder, entrepreneur, author, alias the Master Blaster. Uh, that's the errors that he was in there. That's what he looked like younger. Okay, he's a bodybuilding icon. Da, da, da. He was born to a Pol to Polish Jewish parents. Uh, Joseph Joe Weider grew up in Canada and Montreal, Canada. Blah blah blah. Entrepreneurship. That's about how he started the fitness companies. Bodybuilding revolution. Soon Joe's dream of bringing bodybuilding to a wider public, uh, to the wider public, became a reality. His business started growing enormously once his brother Ben returned from serving in the Canadian Army. At the time, the two brothers joined forces and started working on expanding their sports nutrition and personal training companies. Working with Schwarzenegger, he's the one that brought Schwarzenegger over here, legal issues, blah, blah, blah. Death, Joe Weider died on March 23rd, 2013 at the age of 92 as a result of heart failure. He is survived by his wife, Betty Weider, and daughter, Lydia. Okay, that's again a picture of him when he was younger. The forced rep, these are different... Uh, ideas he had, the forced repetitions principle, that's when you work past failure, the principle of pre-exhaustion, uh, he's the one that basically started all these concepts, if you will, okay, this is his workout, incline sit-ups, bench presses, barbell rows, standing barbell presses, seated calf raises, barbell reverse curls, barbell wrist curls, hanging leg raises, yeah, duh, okay, nutrition, nutrition, this is what you need to understand about his nutrition. Keep this in mind. Eat a little protein at each meal. Eat beef, fish, poultry, eggs, and milk products. Your body can digest and assimilate only 30 grams of protein per feeding. Keep in mind, that's been proven now. So you needn't eat huge protein meals, okay? Not like you see some bodybuilders today doing. Two, eat fresh fruits and vegetables all as close to being raw as possible. Three, eat now, like I said, remember at this era, naturopathy was evolving at the same time as bodybuilding. Uh, although Joe Weider took it away from that approach, I think. Eat a little vegetable fat in the form of seeds and nuts for the skin and nerve health. Eat a, a, a chylated or chylated multivitamin and multimineral, or multimineral and multivitamin supplement with each meal. Uh, eat with as uh, eat with as much variety as possible eat at least three meals per day small meals are digested and utilized more efficiently by the body seven drink plenty of pure water uh, number one eat junk foods which are don't eat junk foods don't eat junk foods which are highly processed fried or full of sugar and white flour two drink uh, drink soft drinks or don't drink alcohol. Don't drink uh, soft drinks or alcoholic beverages. Again, naturopathy. Okay. Number three, don't use too much salt or other seasonings. Again, that actually goes from naturopathy. Also, idols and influences. Yada yada. Okay. What can we learn from Joe Weider? Joe Weider started his life from the bottom, having a quit school at twelve. Blah blah blah. Keep pushing forward. Okay. 
I've quoted about Jack LaLanne a lot because Jack LaLanne was all about the longevity, okay? Jack LaLanne is often called the godfather of fitness, but he called himself a junk food junkie with a bad temper and a sugar addiction until he happened to attend a lecture on the importance of healthy diet. As a teen growing up in San Francisco, he said the talk given by health pioneer Paul Bragg changed his whole attitude and began to concentrate on diet. He began to concentrate on diet and fitness. The lane was decades ahead of his time. Okay. Jack's diet. LaLanne emphasized protein and vegetables at every meal. So he emphasized protein and vegetables at every meal. Although he generally avoided red meat and ate primarily fish and egg whites, the only other animal protein he would eat was roast turkey. He ate only two meals per day and did not believe in snacking. So he was practicing caloric restriction. He would rise early and work out on an empty stomach and not have his first meal until nearly noon. Then nothing again until dinner. Lelaine believed processed foods were the cause of many health problems. Estimated macros, low fat, medium protein, uh, high fat, uh, low fat, wait, let's see. Estimated macros, what are they estimating there? <laughs> Okay, that should say high carbs. I think they put high fat. Okay, Lonely Road. When Lelaine was a teenager, he had to hide his, his lunch of raw vegetables, whole bread, nuts, and raisins, lean meals, hard-boiled egg whites, broth, oatmeal, and soy milk, and seasoned fruit was a typical first meal for Jack. Juiced up, Lelaine was into juicing big time, but his first, his old-fashioned juice, so he made his own. This is important, too. Because we know this from Dr. Bruce Ames about the triage theory of, uh, of aging and disease. And we also know it from Dr. Joel Wallach's writings. He was the, the, Lelaine was the supplement king. Lelaine was a big fan of vitamins and supplements and took 30 to 40 each day. He considered them to be his health insurance policy. What to eat? Vegetables, fruit, oatmeal, egg whites, whole grains, broth, fish, roast turkey, soy milk, and wine in moderation, what to avoid, processed foods, refined sugar, junk food, artificial ingredients, chemical additives, salt additives, caffeine. What are some of Lelaine's workout tips? Work out every day, first thing in the morning. Uh, okay, so work out every day, first thing in the morning. Weights and strength training for 90 minutes, swimming or running for 30 minutes. Work out until you experience muscle fatigue. Consume at least 10 raw vegetables every day. Eat your breakfast after your morning workout and your dinner early. Don't snack. Jack wasn't, uh, wasn't one to warm up before working out. Train as if you are entering the Olympics. Circuit train without rests in between. Jack's words of wisdom. Exercise, okay, blah, blah, blah. So Bernard McFadden, okay, about 12 years ago, my blah, 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 GQ, let's see here. So the Daily Beast calls Bernard McFadden's diet the craziest diet. Now remember, this is back when bodybuilding and naturopathy were kind of the same thing. Uh, I mean, John Hardy Kellogg was promoting bodybuilding at the same time. So this is what you need here. You need some fresh air plus good diet plus exercise is a good job. Okay. So let's see here. McFadden was a self-taught fitness guru. As a teenager, he had cured his own tuberculosis through radical exercise and diet regime. After founding, uh, after founding Physical Culture, the most prominent advertisement for promoting his, me his methods was his own powerful physique, which he would uh, strip down to display uh, at a moment's notice. Through physical culture, McFadden became the Pied Piper for the country's invisible army of fitness buffs. Nearly 50 million copies were sold between the world wars. 
after the after the fiftieth person to whom I showed my copies of physical culture, blah blah blah. When I sat down, the second theme. Okay, one of McFadden's favorite prescriptions was a natural diet comprised primarily of raw fruits, vegetables, and nuts. An excellent tonic he claimed for the exhaustion and sleeplessness. McFadden was also a vegetarian. McFadden's regime of uncooked foods was has little in common with gourmet raw dishes. You may blah, blah, blah. Okay, first few days. Okay, so he was eating this, I guess, this gentleman. So, an excellent tonic. Do, do, do. McFadden's regime. Do, 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 okay. Anything pasteurized. It's basically a diet of exclusion. Anything It excludes anything pasteurized. Let's see where we get here. Uh, is off limits. Coffee is doubly bad. Remember, like I said... Okay, as it requires both roasting and brewing, rice, pasta, and almost all cereals and soups, nope, all seasonings except... Now, this is an extreme diet to get back to health, that McFadden would say. The shopping list that he took with him to Whole Foods, uh, his first, okay, it was uh, organic fruits, vegetables, raw unsalted nuts, unpasteurized honey, green tea to make in the sun, some whole grains that could be softened by soaking in in cold water, and a few varieties of legumes. Okay. By day five, though the tremendous surge in my fiber intake was wreaking havoc on my insides, things were shifting. I kept having visions of icebergs cracking and falling into the sea. Eventually, the discomfort subsided, but meals had become chores. My sprouted legumes tasted like grass, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Losing weight on the raw diet is easy, not least uh, because given the choice between my hundredth handful of organic raisins or just skipping a meal, I often picked the latter. McFadden was right. Divorced from spices and familiar flavors, blah, 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 Mark Adams. So what he is admitting, though, is he is admitting... That McFadden's regime of uncooked to do the first few days weren't bad. I hovered I ho I hovered green tea to stave off caffeine headaches, and ate bowls of berries with twice soaked buckwheat, the texture of which can charitably be des described as gooey. Uh, he purchased so much fruit each day uh, that his produce man must have thought he was canning preserves. Okay, so let's see. Mark Adams is rare. Okay. As I have looked, as we have looked at in this video, I showed that bodybuilding done properly is not only uh, is not only healthy, it's life promoting. But is bodybuilding today healthy? Is competitive bodybuilding today healthy for the heart, bones, etc.? Bodybuilding is very much a visual sport. Blah blah blah. Among its benefits, bodybuilding can contribute to better bone health, according to Live Strong. The resistance training associated with bodybuilding puts strain on your bones and forces them to adapt. Unfortunately, while bodybuilding can benefit muscles and bone health, it can be detrimental to your overall heart health. For example, How Stuff Works reported. Now remember, most of the people that I covered did what? They lifted light weights at higher repetitions. So remember, okay, so lifting more than half of your overall body weight can put you at a severe risk of tearing your aorta an often fatal heart injury however this risk is only for those who lift uh, lift to the extreme in moderate amounts strength training is also highly beneficial for your heart and lung health and can improve the function of both of these vital organs Along with weightlifting, bodybuilding is often associated with strict dieting. Again, this is an issue to help get as lean as, as, as lean and big as possible. Unfortunately, according to Healthline, many bodybuilders tend to restrict caloric intake and upload on protein while leaving out other important vitamins and nutrients. However, unhealthy dieting does not have to be a part of your bodybuilding routine and maintaining a healthy diet can help you reach your ultimate fitness goals. Okay. Uh, some bodybuilders may even develop a distorted view of their bodies. That's called body dysmorphic disorder, which is a mental health issue.
So there are some bodybuilding dangers. The aim of bodybuilding is to substantially increase muscle mass through exercise, usually through weightlifting. The sport allows many fitness aficionados to develop the Olympian physique of their dreams. Lifting lessons. Overzealous bodybuilders run the risk of lifting more than they can safely handle, straining or tearing the muscles. Even more dangerous, a bodybuilder can drop the weight back onto himself or another person, causing severe injury. It is crucial bodybuilders use a spotter, a spotter, blah, 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 okay. Heavy on the heart, uh, Yale New Haven Hospital warns that lifting more than half your body weight can put you at risk of sudden death by tearing the aorta. Shake fakes and hormone horrors. Bodybuilders often turn to protein supplements such as protein powder and pills in order to beef up their muscles. There's nothing really too wrong with protein powders. Though this may bring short-term benefits, there is long-term risks to excessive protein consumption. <laughs> to excessive protein. These risks include increased risk of osteoporosis, degeneration of the bones, and worsening of pre-existing kidney problems, according to the UK's blah, blah, blah. Safe space. Minimize bodybuilding dangers by following safe exercise precautions. The dark side to long-term bodybuilding. Long-term natural bodybuilding will keep you living strong even until, you're, until you reach your 80s and 90s. How? Your muscles will be strong from all those years of lifting. Strong muscles, tendons, and ligaments are more capable of withstanding stress, have better balance, thus reducing the likelihood of pulled muscles. Psychological benefits, of course, it makes you feel better. Negative effects. Over time, weightlifting puts a tremendous amount of stress on your joints, tendons, and ligaments. As a result, many bodybuilders have tendinitis, back pain, shoulder pains, and other forms of joint problems. These injuries, if left untreated, will remain and significantly get worse by the end of the, of the career of the bodybuilder. The elbow, knees, and shoulder take a beating. Unlike sports like basketball, football, tennis, etc., bodybuilding is a sport that allows you to compete well into your 50s, 60s, and even 70s if you want. You just have to make the proper adjustments. Many top bodybuilders, including Chris Dickerson and Frank Zane, actually reach their peak, uh, their peak after the age of 40. Heavy squats and deadlifts can compress the vertebra. Liver damage may occur as a result of excessive supplement use in the past. Your liver is your uh, body's filter and gets severely damaged if you take too many supplements. Off the top of my head, I'd like to say that creatine makes your liver work extra hard, and without enough water, your liver can be damaged. To avoid this, research the supplements you are, t you are taking. Bottom line, the positive benefits of bodybuilding greatly outweigh the negative consequences. So um, I've actually started to engage in corrective exercises more than anything else. Uh, and people might say, what am I correcting? Well, I'm correcting the process of aging. Okay, aging is a disease. I stand firm by that, as many gerontologists do. And I decided to continue to work on corrective exercises as opposed to bodybuilding exercises. Uh, the more you get hurt. When I was younger, I would get hurt, and it wasn't a big deal to me. However... As you get older, uh, it, I mean, I'm still bouncing back the same I was in my teens and 20s, but I care more about getting hurt now. Uh, so what is corrective exercise? Okay, well, corrective exercise, if you've, if you've ever been to physical therapy, you've been evaluated and prescribed specific exercises to help you move better with less pain. Even if you don't have pain or discomfort, poor movement patterns can eventually lead to overuse injuries and movement issues. Corrective exercise is a technique that combines knowledge of anatomy and biomechanics to address compensations and imbalances to improve your overall quality of movement. A skilled assessment considers how the body is moving as a whole. Functional versus corrective exercise. I don't like the term functional strength because all strength is technically functional, but a functional exercise is a compound movement aimed at improving specific motions required for a particular sport or movements in everyday life. Examples are squats, lunges, and step-ups. Uh, exercise choices can differ based on the activity-specific uh, activity needs. Functional training is yet a different 
concept and also includes aspects such as metabolic conditioning and high-intensity interval training. A corrective exercise aims to correct a specific dysfunction or limitation that's preventing proper movement. For example, if someone's knees are collapsing inward during a squat. Benefits of corrective exercise improves mobility, improves posture, improves strength and balances, decreases the risk of injuries, helps open new exercise opportunities, bridges the gap between rehabilitation and return to fitness and sports activities, improves current mobility. Uh, what is it? Okay. A great form of cardiometabolic conditioning is actually walking. Okay. So this is how to start a walking program. Begin by walking uh, at 3.5 mile per hour pace, walking 17 to 20 minutes. Okay, increase your speed, blah, blah, blah. Fitness walking technique posture. Keep your head upright, looking ahead. Your chin should be in a, no a neutral position, uh, not, uh, not a high or tucked in towards your chest. Uh, foot placement. Keep feet close to an imaginary line in the center. Finding your stride, da -da -da, arm swing, this makes your walk a total body exercise. You will burn an additional 5, 5 to 10% of calories. Let your arms bend at the elbows and swing them. What's body sculpting versus body uh, bodybuilding? So this guy went from this to this by increasing his body sculpting. So... Uh, Bodybuilding, okay, essentially bodybuilding is the act of building your body. However, it is also a sport, okay, where, okay, win awards, beat records, blah, 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 whereas body sculpting is more of an act. No, not an act like it's fake, but an act like you quite literally act upon the goal of sculpting your body. Okay, bodybuilding versus body sculpting. Uh, in the early days, body uh, building your body up w has been a feat for those who were dedicated. During our modern times, bodybuilding hit its golden era of popular sport with people like Arnold Schwarzenegger. As of lately, they have the, the, no doubt bodybuilding is a sport. Bodybuilding versus body sculpting. The actual act of bodybuilding exists in many forms. It has to the, the, regardless. Uh, of the lengths you of the lengths you pursue in your bodybuilding, there is a natural inclination to gain muscle. So to build your body through bodybuilding, you are primarily looking to add muscle. Bodybuilding versus body sculpting. Instead of overall progression and muscle gain, body sculpting focuses on changing the look of your physique. This can include body recomposition, weight loss, extreme weight loss, and the attempt to altering particular areas of the body. There is no real sport or anything behind body sculpting. However, there are endless amounts of people who are looking only to sculpt their bodies. Maybe cut down the fat to, uh, to have their abdominal show. Literally, they, aim, they can aim to keep the same weight but change their entire look. Bodybuilders practice the art of body sculpting as well to target certain areas. Bodybuilding versus body sculpting... Uh, how to approach each discipline, blah, blah, blah. Let's just go to body sculpting. So when a, so I practice body sculpting now. When approaching body sculpting, you can use more general tactics. For, most, for the most part, body sculpting comes down to three key things, discipline, diet, and deficit. Okay, discipline. You need to be disciplined because it is, that is the foundation to everything you achieve in body sculpting. Okay, Diet, uh, this is super important because diet is the key to success with the way you feel and speed your progress. Uh, okay, body composition, with body composition, da, da, da. Lastly, deficit. This is an important thing to remember because for the most part, to sculpt your body, you will need to be in a deficit of calories. When you are in a deficit, you lose weight faster, more consistently, and see changes and see the changes you want. This is an example of a beginner's calisthenics routine. Okay, warm up, raise your heart rate, mobilize your joints. These are some exercises to mobilize your joints, shoulder dislocations, chest openers, arm circles. There's links to each of these back extensions, cat stretch, uh, trunk twists, bridges, hip mobilization. Okay. Handstand progressions, da, 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 and this can be followed by you if you want to read it.
And that's all for this video.